session is envisioned as a high level discourse. Through current data, data that all three conclaves, he's been talked to the NCB of writing a working paper that will be published in the Lok Sabha itself. And along with that, we've envisioned this discourse as a way to inculcate student learning through a student participating as speakers who are conducting experts. The speaker session is envisioned as two speakers, the first speaker of which will be the core speaker, as you can see on my right. The core speaker will be the speaker that will be giving you a brief of how the status quo looks like what the current legislations and laws look like, and basically how that applicates into the reality that we live in, and why that reality exists. The next speaker that we have is called the Delta Speaker. The Delta Speaker gives you a new policy, gives you how a change in the status quo will either better the current status quo or change certain legalities or laws in a way that is better for the paradigm that we live in today, and make vulnerable stakeholders much better. And that is how we're going to plan this event. The format of the same is going to be uh, explained now. So to begin with, we'll have opening submissions from both sides that will consist of eight minutes. And these eight minutes will be given first with the <coughs> followed by the data speaker. These eight, uh, these eight minutes will include giving you an analysis of how the status quo exists, how certain changes are required, and what are the requirements of this social reality that we live in. Post the opening submissions, we will have replies from both speakers. So post the opening submission from the Delta speaker, the co-speaker will get five minutes to reply to the content provided by the Delta speaker. Post the reply from the Delta speaker, the uh, post the reply from the co-speaker, the Delta speaker will get five minutes to reply to that content. we will be having questions from the audience, and this is where audience becomes a very important part. So as we see in the Rajya Sabha itself, during the 30 minute session, the speakers take questions from other speakers, and they note it down themselves. After taking three questions from either the audience or the moderator, the speaker has three minutes to reply to these questions. Post questions, we will have the audience playing a major part in this positive discussion, which is the motion decisions. So, the, all of the audience members, if you see in front of you, the chair that is in front of you has a ballot paper stuck on it. And it has a specific number to it. So the point of this motion decisions is to see where the students of SRGC actually stand. Which side of the panel, whether it is the co or the delta, actually actualizes in our perspectives of the world. And uh, the voting for the same will be done in the same format of the Oxford debate. The ballots that you have in front of you, you can take either co and delta and you have to exit from a specific gate on either the side. The right side of the gate will be for the core speaker, and the left side gate will be for the delta speaker. Dispersal for that will be first from the numbers 1 to 10, followed by uh, 11 to 20, and so on. So with that being said, the format has been decided. Moving on to the speakers that we have. So the first speaker that we have on our panel is uh, ACP Vaith Prakash. Mr. Prakash is a storied policeman who's been serving in the Delhi police for the last 20 years, 8 years. Just like us, Sir has completed his BCom honours and his law degree right from the Faculty of Law here in Delhi University. He's been attached to the special cell of the Delhi Police for the last one year, and I welcome him on the stage. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> so the next speaker in our panel is Mr. Vicky Borora. Mr. Borora has been a social reformer working in the healthcare sector. He's the founder of various initiatives like the Borola Healthcare Organization and the Great Legalization Movement. He is a positive reformer who dreams of a safe, efficient, and affordable healthcare setup for humanity fueled by cannabis cures. I welcome him to the stage. With that being said, I call upon the co speaker to establish the core report. Hello. Good morning, friends. My name is Vaid Prakash. 
I am Assistant Police of Police, Delhi Police. And I have done my BCom honors, then graduate CWA, and then law from Delhi University. Our topic for today is NDPS Act and Cannabis Legality. I was wondering that why this esteemed college, why this reputed college is functioning on this kind of uh, topic. Jo hai. So I discussed with Bank, who is operating this program. Jo I can't say there should be chapters on cryptocurrency or there should be effect of uh, Ukraine war on the world economy and why we are dealing with this. Jo hai. So they told me that we are doing different programs and this program is on the NDPS Act. We want uh, that you should speak on this issue. Jo hai. So first thing is that what is NDPS and what is cannabis? There are two, uh, two, two chapters, two topics, NDPS Act and Cannabis Legality. So what is NDPS? Have you, uh, do you have any knowledge about the NDPS? Yes. NDPS is an act, Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act. In 1985, this act was started enacted by the Parliament of India. And there are the certain articles. You must be aware about the cannabis, you must be aware about the opium, you have heard about the heroin, you have heard about the smack, all the different things. You, have, you must have searched on the internet or uh, seen or you have must in the read in the newspaper that these drugs were recovered there. So all these things are covered under the provisions of NDPS Act 1985. So this doesn't mean that before 1985 there was no law in the country. There was law in the country, there were the different laws in the country. Initially it was the Opium Act 1856, 1856 the Opium Act was there, then 1878 again Opium Act, then Dangerous Drug Act 1930, 1930. So, UN Convention in 1961, it was decided that there should be some check on these kinds of uh, drugs. And in 1985, this act was enacted by the parliament. And the purpose of this act was to keep a check on the circulation, storage, sale, possession of certain products, certain drugs, which have been specified in the schedule of the NDPS Act. So the, we, we started with that, that what is cannabis? Do you know anyone about the cannabis? Have you heard about the cannabis? Bhaan. Bhaan hai. Simple in simple language we say it bhaan. But it, one of the refined person, it should be interactive, we are sitting in our house. Hai. So it, in house discussion, we should, I would request you all to participate because you are the, uh, uh, you are the best brain I feel that uh, since uh, you are studying in the SRCC and you are the best brain. And you should participate and if you have any question, you should uh, stop me and you should ask me immediately. So, bhang, simple word is the bhang and the another defined version of that is the charas. So, the purpose is that ke whether it should be, now we are discussing on the issue that whether it should be legalized, circulation of the bhang and charas should be circulated, it should be legalized or there should be keep a, there should be a check on the movement, circulation, sale, purchase and consumption of these drugs in the country. So, we are discussing on this issue today. So, cannabis, cannabis is defined in the section 2 of this, this is called the narcotics, and uh, psychotropic substances act like we have the income tax act we have the other ex, other uh, rules similarly narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act is there the ndps act is there so first thing is the cannabis what is the definition of the cannabis we say it says that charas that is the separated resin or whatever form whether crude or purified contained from the cannabis plant so there is a cannabis plant Cannabis plant is as, as old as history. It is a history of 50,000 year old. And we have records of around 1200 years back, 12,000 years back, where in Greece, these plants were used when in Indian culture also in Atharveda. We have four Vedas, Ragved, Yadurved, Sarved and Atharved. And Atharved deals with the medicines. So in Atharved, there is defined, there is some reference about this particular bhang and charas, there is a defined in this particular. Thing to have. So there is one thing is the charas and other thing is the ganja. Ganja, ganja is again part of that cannabis plant. Jo hai. Again, ganja is extracted from that cannabis plant and from this uh, hashish is a marijuana. With normal language, we call it marijuana. So marijuana is taken out from this plant. Jo hai. So this plant is quite old plant and no doubt, admittedly, it has this has certain medic, uh, medicinal values. Jo hai. This plant has some uh, medicinal values. A cannabis plant. Plant of the it's called simply in English it's called the grass also. So come, now another version of this is the what is the small quantity and what is the commercial quantity. How much we can keep? It literally we, we generally we can't keep any of the things there. But for the prosecution purposes, you have, there are the things that what is the small quantity and what is the commercial quantity. So it is defined in the act if you if someone is carrying hundred grams of the 
charas or 100 gram of the cannabis then it would be treated as a small quantity and if it is carrying around the 1 kg of the quantity it will be termed as a commercial quantity. So what is the purpose of the small quantity and what is the purpose of the commercial quantity? To define the punishment, to fix the punishment, if a person is carrying it for the small purposes or carrying it for the commercial purposes, commercial purposes means it is a huge quantity and it is being used for the sale, being used for the transportation and being used for the other purposes also. So small quantity is defined as a punishment provisions. Then if there is a small quantity around 100 grams and if it is for the personal consumption, maybe for the personal consumption, maybe for the sales. So if it is for the personal consumption, then there is specific relaxation in the law. And if there is for the sale purposes, then there is no relaxation in the law. So if we are carrying a small quantity, then punishment can be up to the one year, up to the one year and with fine of 10,000 rupees or it depends. And if we are carrying more quantity, if we are carrying the commercial quantity, then the punishment is up to the 10 years and the rupees, the fine of rupees, one lakh. So again, then small quantity, cannabis, charas, gaja, gaja and then uh, again we coming to uh, the, uh, now there are the provisions by the state. State government has the power to control the circulation, to control the manufacture, to, to control the uh, to control the supply of this cannabis. So state governments have power to issue license to specific farmers that they can produce this cannabis. So there are the certain departments, there are the narcotics commissioner who will fix that who will produce this crop, this cannabis crop, who will produce this crop in what quantity this, uh, this crop will be produced and what will be the use. Basically, central government or the state governments have allowed the use of cannabis for the, to some extent for the medical purpose as well as for the commercial purpose, yeah, not for the human consumption. For the medical purpose, though it, since it has some medical value, so it has been allowed for uh, to produce this agriculture product for the purposes of this, uh, uh, this uh, medical purpose as well as for this commercial purpose. So section 10 deals with this. Now we come to the provision of certain operations, floppy or cotton field section 14, then we come to the special provisions related to cannabis, allow cultivation or cannabis plant for the industrial purposes, after obtaining fiber seed or for the agriculture purposes. The quality of this product is that it can be used in various commercial things. It can be used in making robes, it can be used in making different products, fiber products. So state government or central government allow the manufacturing or allow the production of these things to have. So now we come to the section 20. Section 20 of this act tells about the punishment with regard to the cannabis plants and cannabis to So I told you 6 months and 10 thousand rupees fine in case of a small quantity and may extend to 10 years or fine of rupees 1 lakh in case of commercial quantity. Then we come to the section 27. Punishment for consumption of charas. So again there is a punishment for consumption of charas also. If we are carrying a punishment, if we are carrying a charas quantity of 250, 25 grams, then it is punishable under the provision of section 27 and again there is a punishment there. But there are the certain exemptions also in this case to them. Section 64A, section 64A of the MDPS Act which reads that there is some immunity from the prosecution to adult to different persons. Suppose if you are using the cannabis, if you are using the charas, if you are using the uh, this bhan and certain quantity, small quantity for the my individual use, it has been recovered from my possession, then no doubt a case will be registered against him. But if I seek for an immunity from the government, I say that I want to, to, to go to the de-addiction center, I want to uh, I want to get myself de-addicted, so state, state government or the central government or the court where your trial is ongoing, they can decide that in this particular case, no penalty should be given, no penalty should be awarded to you. So this is the specific provision in this particular act where uh, there is a specific remedy, there is a specific that if you want to de-addict from this uh, problem, if you, if you are using this, you have been recovered in some uh, contraband, have been recovered from your possession and a case has been registered, but you want to, uh, you give an undertaking that okay, I want to de-addict, they de-addict, then there will be no punishment against you. So these are the basic legal provisions, these are the basic legal provisions where we have discussed about this NDPS Act. Now the now main question arises whether this should be allowed, whether this ban should be allowed or whether this ban should be discontinued. 
So, being a law enforcement officer, being a law enforcement officer, we used to deal with the different persons, we used to deal with the addicts, we used to deal with the suppliers of these products. Jo hai. And there are the various studies, there are the various, uh, I, as I told you that there is this plant has some medical value. So, in favor of this, there are the various studies, there are the various uh, steps where people will say that uh, to get relaxation, to relax your mind or to get the things, some, some sort of relaxation, we used to deal with, we, we used to consume it. But there are similarly, there are the medical reports, there are the certain medical reports, I was just going through some of the medical reports, there are the medical reports which says, which suggest that long use, long use of these kinds of contraband, these kinds of products can affect your mental as well as your psychological faculties. So, I am in favor that these kinds of, uh, this, this kind of uh, ban should be continued and this should be under the control of the state and these things should not be allowed in our society where already we have other like menaces like we have already liquor is there, already tobacco is there. There are the certain things which can be maybe in the favor of the tobacco, that tobacco use is good, tobacco use is so and so. But if you go through the medical reports where we see the various kinds of mouth cancer, we see that there are number of persons are suffering from mouth cancer by way of use of these tobaccos. There are the number we are using in people in different states, people are using this different kinds of good cast. And there are the established reports which suggest that the Gutka is serious to health. Gutka is uh, mouth cancer, lung cancer, different kinds of cancers are attracted by this, uh, these kinds of Gutka, these kinds of tobacco. And similarly, there are the reports, there are the medical reports which suggest that use of cannabis, use of drugs, use of cells <coughs> in the long term can be very harmful for your health, your physical health, your mental health, and your psychological health. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank the co-speakers for establishing the quorum and giving us a spatialization of how the FNDPS Act works. Now I call upon the Delta speaker, Mr. Varuna, to engage with the students on the possible Delta on this floor. Well, I would like to thank uh, Sri Ram College of Commerce for uh, hosting this event. And uh, special thanks to Dr. for uh, being such a passionate uh, guy about uh, uh, having this topic to be heard and discussed and also coordinating uh, uh, with various faculties of the bureaucracy to come and introduce this knowledge to you guys. So, uh, there are a couple of, the, see when it comes to cannabis, the, one of the biggest problem is the misunderstanding of what the plant is. Everyone, like the NDPS Act, uh, what it has done is it has taken all of the harmful lethal chemicals and drugs and combine it into one single act, which is called the Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropics, Psychotropic Substances Act of 1985. And along with that, cannabis is also included. Now, the problem is that cannabis is a very medicinal plant. It's an ancient plant. It's a spiritual plant. It's a herb. It's very sacred to Indian, Indian uh, traditional systems. In Ayurveda, they speak very highly of cannabis. In Vedas, they speak very highly of cannabis. And people have consumed this plant for thousands and thousands of years without any harm to themselves or their health. Okay, that is the most important part. But in 1985, why did the Indian government all of a sudden take cannabis that was never prohibited in this country for the entire history of Indian India as a society, as a civilization? It was never existing and all of a sudden that drug was taken and classified along with the lethal chemicals and toxic substances which even can kill you. So, this goes back to about 1961 when there was a single convention on narcotics where in America they wanted to raise a war on drugs. They wanted to control the drug use. They wanted to, there are, in 1950s there was a couple of compounds that came uh, uh, into the American society which is called as psychedelics which when consumed it gives the person an expanded awareness and consciousness about what the world is and what the reality is. So, the American government wanted to control the psychedelics. So, they understood that the, the war that was ongoing with the Vietnam and uh, you know, like people were uh, getting more educated and about you know, like the government propaganda. All, all of these things were, uh, could be easily pinpointed to the drugs that a couple of people were using which was psilocybin, which was LSD, which was DMT, which was ayahuasca and uh, also cannabis. So the American government said that, you no, know, like instead of uh, uh, us going to the news channels, let's prohibit all of these substances. So in 1950, they decided 
that we are going to raise a war on drugs. So all of the things that could expand your consciousness, all right, your consciousness is limited. It's like, let's say your consciousness is limited, it's like a ball today, yeah? When you read a book, your consciousness expands. When you have an experience, your consciousness expands. When you use certain things, when you go travel to certain places, when you have very unique experiences, your consciousness expands. So the same way what cannabis and psych other psychedelics does is it gives you an awareness of yourself, of your sense organs and different perspectives in your mind as to what what is the reality of the world that we live in. So American government decided that we'll raise a war on drugs. So they invited about 76 countries from across the world saying that we are raising a war on drugs so you are also joining our bandwagon. So you guys are all supposed to raise the war on drugs as well in your country so that no one grows in your countries and supplies to America as well. But the only thing is in, inside that particular uh, single convention of narcotics came in cannabis for the first time. A plant that was used for thousands of years safely approved by millions of users came under the classification of something as dangerous for the first time. So in 1961 they conducted the single convention of narcotics in uh, uh, Austria, Vienna and uh, they called all the 76 countries. India at that point of time was also invited. India said no, we are not prohibiting cannabis because cannabis has been part of our journey. Our Shaivism is the very core practices of Shaivism goes to the use of bhak. In Holi, in India, people make bang as a drink, they boil it with milk and they drink it and then it brings a sense of joy and unity and the society which is broken down in many fragments all unites together in terms of celebration. So in Holi we use it, in Diwali we use it, in Vijaya Dashami we use it. So Dasara as a festival, it's called Dasahara. Alright, so there are 10 bad qualities that can come into the human mind. Alright. So what are these 10 bad qualities? The Veda says that no, like it's the Kama, Vasana, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Matsara, Swartha, Anyaya, Amanvata and Ahankara. So these are the 10 bad qualities that can come into the human mind. It needs to be cut. So these are the 10 days. Dasa, Haram. You kill these 10 bad qualities. Through what? Vijaya Dasham. The name of this cannabis plant in the Vedas is called as Vijaya. Our rishis call this plant as Vijaya. It's also called as Jaya, which means it brings you success. It eradicates all the bad things that is there in you and it brings out the good and the best out of you. So, Indian government in 1961 said, no, we are not going to do this. In 1971, again, they created one more international convention, asked all the countries to come in, forced them to prohibit it. Again, in 1971, Indian government said, no, we cannot prohibit it. We have the use of Ayurveda. We have all of our, uh, our most of the base medicines in Ayurvedic uh, preparations was actually bound because it is antifungal, it is antiviral. When you make medicinal extracts out of this and you can preserve the medicines for hundreds of years because nothing grows when cannabis is in it. You know, like all the, not the bad things like bacteria, fungus, virus, it cannot grow in the medicine. So bound was pretty much used as a base. So Indian government said, no, Ayurveda to hai, Veda hai, you know, like there's a, a cultural use, there's a cultural acceptance we have from Himalayas to Kanyakumari, people, you know, like farmers are growing uh, cannabis, it is being given to cattle, cattle gets a lot hungry, it feeds on a lot and it grows a lot of milk and all of these, uh, 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 produces a lot of milk. So all of these plus points are there, so again in 1971 Indian government said, no. In 1985, when Rajiv Gandhiji was assassinated, so the country was going through an economic turmoil, alright, and uh, in 1985, though it cannot be actually proven, you now whether uh, 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 this is actually the way, but in 1985, 25 years of uh, India being a signatory to single convention of narcotics, it passed away, so Indian government was forced in a way to create the Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act. And for the first time since thousands of years of use of cannabis in India was prohibited in 1985. Now, the present day situation, alright, uh, just a show of hands, how many of you guys think that the environment needs to be protected? All of you guys? Good, thank you. How many of you guys think that we should have access to better medicines 
effective medicines and affordable medicines. Okay, thank you. How many of you guys think that the products that we are using in the human world right now, you know, we are using wood, to hai, steel, hai, petrol, hai, diesel, a lot of coal that we are burning to run the industries and factories, all of these electric supplies again coming from the coal uh, factories. 70% of India's energy is being supplied by coal factories. Yeah? So though this looks nice, somewhere some factory is adding a lot of carbon dioxide to the world. So there are industrial products that are available in the human civilization. Most of the products can be converted into bioproducts without damaging the environment. How many of you guys would like to see that bioproduct transformation in this country? All right, thank you. Now, there, as a civilization, we are a population of about 1.8 billion. Yeah. There are a lot of problems. The government has told that if you consume all of these chemical drugs, it's very dangerous. We need to protect it. And by the way, you know, like, would really please give a big round of applause to the bureaucrats and uh, also Sir, who has done a phenomenal job into keeping all the harmful drugs away into reaching young minds like you. You know, this, it goes a lot. They're one of the most uh, uh, not so appreciated, but they do phenomenal work into keeping all sorts of bad people and bad drugs away. A big round of applause. Uh, uh, my support is always there to you guys. But the problem is, there are chemical drugs which are very dangerous, and there are natural drugs that was part of our civilization, part of our history, that is also banned. The government says that it is dangerous. We need to remove it so that the people do not get affected, their health does not get depreciated, their minds doesn't get spoiled. But the government doesn't have any problems when it comes to applying alcohol. Alcohol is dangerous. Alcohol acidifies your body. Alcohol destroys your vital organs. It creates cancers in you, which is all proven, which is all known, established fact. It creates a lot of crimes. Yeah, agree? Most of the rape cases in India, if you do a, a, a parallel study as to what, what happened in the rapist's mind, much of it is connected to the use and consumption of abuse of alcohol. Alright? Alcohol it is in there. But the government is simply allowing all of these things. Correct? Is it allowed? Is it promoted? Can anyone go at 10 o'clock in the morning to go and buy liquor from any shop? Yeah? At 11 o'clock in the night? It's possible? So, how many of you guys would like to see civilization as a whole take a stand to eradicate all these problems that are created by alcohol. You know, domestic abuse, home abuse, women getting beaten up, children getting abused, rapes happening across the country, drunken driving, all of these things are there, yeah? Thank you. Three more things. When it comes to cannabis, cannabis is one of the most economical crop. Alright? When we talk about the economic, the crop as a science, it's phenomenal this plant just generously produced in abundance. The root is economical value, it is medicinal. The stem is extremely economical value. It can create fibers which can you know, like stitch all of our textiles. What is inside the stem is the woody matter which can be used to contract, uh, uh, create thousands of products. Right? Thousands of products that are very essential to human civilization. So that has an economic value. The leaf, again it's a medicinal. Instead of consuming tea that is sprayed with a lot of chemicals and pesticides that is coming from Assam or Darjeeling or wherever, all those chemicals that are being sprayed on the tea, we can consume cannabis. On cannabis doesn't grow any pests, so it doesn't require any chemicals to be sprayed. All right? The leaves can be used as tea, it is also medicinal. The flowers is extremely medicinal. It can cure any kind of disorders that are arising in your body, in your mind, in your heart. All right? And the seeds that comes in the flower is one of the most nutritional seeds. Most. Alright? In chicken, there is about 20% uh, uh, protein per 100 grams. Alright? In beef, you, there is about 20-25. In mutton or lamb, there is about 20-25%. But in hemp seed, there is 33% protein. Alright? And zero carbohydrates. And the oil that comes with it is having omega-3, omega-6 and omega-9, which is all essential for your human brain and upliftment of your brain. So this seed is extremely important and yes the law allows that you know, like the state governments can make uh, policies and other things to promote all of these things but there is no development. All right? 35 years of this prohibition in 2014 discovered a cure for cancer, have been propagating this message for the last 7 years, have approached the government offices from Karnataka all the way till the PMO, the, from CDSCO and even filed a case in the Delhi High Court for a full scale legalization. There are no state governments 
giving out the licenses as in how it is required to conduct medicinal formulations and to create scientific studies. There is a problem with that. Now, when the plant has so many benefits, it can all benefit the farmer, right? When farmers are growing it, instead of growing rice and supplying one single grain, which is one single product to one industry as a food industry, the farmers can grow this crop and supply five different raw materials to five different industries. Every acre of land can be converted into an economical hotspot for the farmers without the need of much water, without the need of any kind of uh, 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 environmental changes which can affect the crop growth. You know, when there is too much rain, the crop dies. Many of the farmers actually go through this thing. And when there is no heat and when there is too much heat, many of the crops die. But cannabis is, as a crop is very, very sturdy. It grows in any kind of climatic conditions from here all the way till 2000 meters on the Himalayan terrain. No other, there are certain areas in the Himalayan terrain where no crops grow, apart from few trees, no crop grows, cannabis grows. Alright? So, how many of you guys again would like to see uh, the uh, economic prosperity of the farmers across this country? Alright, good, thank you. Now, when it comes to consciousness, consciousness. We all have, we don't know what consciousness is. We all associate with names, you know, like myself as Vicky and myself as Akshat and his Vedh Balm, Vedh Prakashji, and uh, every one of you guys uh, associate yourself with some names. This is a consciousness. Consciousness can either go up or go down. You can either become a Dev or either you can become a Rakshas. That's all there is. This is a game of consciousness. Now, those who consume cannabis, oh by the way, uh, just like to make a clarification that for me there is no consumption of cannabis, though the appearance looks like this. Uh, cannabis was used 10 years ago back in 2012 and it helped me tremendously and changed my entire life direction and ever since then I have been a social activist. So cannabis can either take you up towards becoming a deva which is purifying yourself and releasing all of these unwanted uh, mental conditions that we have, uh, the 10 bad qualities, or it can make you a rakshas. When you drink some things like alcohol and other things, it really degrades your consciousness. When you see bad things, you go down. When you have bad experiences, you go down. When you have good experiences, you go up. So consciousness. So cannabis is the way forward for consciousness as an evolution. All right. But you guys need to be very careful. It's not like you're taking an advice from someone who just came to your college and you going in search of cannabis. Please don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. All right. The penalization of this uh, act is very very stringent. If you're caught with it, you'll go. You'll really have a very bad time and bad image, and your family and your mama papa is going to smack your butts left and right. And right. Yeah, you don't have to do all of these things. But when it comes finding you, it's your choice. My fundamental question to the Indian government is, we have constitution and all the laws that are supposed to be framed is supposed to protect this constitution as a whole. Yeah, we have fundamental right to life, right to profession, right to conscience. What you believe is your right. So when they created an act and they prohibited this, that really created unconstitutional law about cannabis. You cannot believe in cannabis, you cannot use cannabis, you cannot grow a plant that is given to us by nature. It doesn't harm anyone, it doesn't harm yourself. So all of these problems are there. Raise of hands quick, last one last thing. How, much, uh, how many of you guys would like to see the best of human civilization created and not the worst? With or without cannabis, doesn't matter. Consciousness as a whole, civilization as, uh, civilization as a whole, to create the best of the human civilization. Where there is no hate, everything is filled with love. Yeah. So last thing is technology. All the things that we are using today is can be clubbed together as a technology. Yeah. This, this is a technology, this is a technology, our phones are technology, all of these things. So there are over 50,000 products that can be created with cannabis and hemp. But again, my effort has been for the last seven years to get these licenses that uh, Sir was talking about that every state government is empowered to give out the licenses, but no one has the faith in cannabis. 
No one wants to believe in cannabis. And that's the reason, after all of these failed experiences with the bureaucracy, a case was filed in the Delhi High Court and uh, the Honorable Judges at the High Court is looking into the matters whether this is actually unconstitutional or not. Tomorrow if someone comes and tells you that you cannot worship this God, it's unconstitutional. Yeah, so the same way cannabis is such that cannabis is a culture as a whole. You believe in it or you do not believe in it, that's your choice. But there needs no law to tell you what you need to do and what you shouldn't do, especially when something is safe. And it has proven to be safe for thousands of years, correct? There is no recorded history of death associated with cannabis as a consumed drug. No associated death. Not one. No scientist has ever recorded it. In fact, it takes about 1500 kgs of ganja to be smoked in less than 15 minutes for someone to die. 1500 kgs of ganja. That's impossible. We cannot. All that the plant can do is it can either relax you or it can energize you. It can give you creativity. It can give you joy, it can give you laughter, it can give you good health. So my advice to the government is, please have a better outlook at NDPS. For me, there is a 100% support that NDPS Act should stay. Alright, it is very very essential to create a sane society. We do not want drug dealers to keep coming and pushing all sorts of horrible drugs. Uh, tablets and pills and party drugs and this and that to our young children and uh, anyone actually. They don't need to go through that. But you can have a better outlook at NDPS by classifying what is natural drugs. Among the list of about 63 chemicals that they have in the NDPS uh, uh, Act, uh, there are certain things that are natural, which the nature has produced. There are certain things that are chemical, which people can produce in the laboratory. For example, you might have all seen Breaking Bad, meth, heroin, they're all, they're all man intervened produced drugs. All right? Opium is a plant, cannabis is a plant, so you differentiate first what is natural, what is synthetic. That's number one. Secondly, you differentiate what is lethal and what is non-lethal. Thirdly, you differentiate what is essential, which is very much needed in the society, like cannabis, and what is non-essential. Then you can think about you know, like having a good association of uh, 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 lawmakers and brain, uh, think tanks and other things and come out with a policy to uh, to create what is best for the country. All right, thank you. I thank the other speakers for establishing a better forum and a better discourse for us to engage with. I call upon the co speaker to give a reply and I request both speakers to stick to the time limit if possible. Yeah, definitely. I think we are in the time limit itself. <laughs> So my dear friend has given a lot of benefits about this cannabis, <coughs> and after hearing his arguments uh, that it expands consciousness, awareness about yourself and what the real world is. So I, as per my knowledge, uh, this human body is the most complex and most intelligent creation of the world. And we don't need anything about, to, we don't need anything to know about ourselves. Right? We have yoga, we have meditation, and all these things are quite sufficient to give us about uh, uh, about our inner self. He was also telling about the Vijay Dashmi, what is the meaning of the Vijay Dashmi, what is the meaning of the Vijay, and what is the meaning of the Dashmi. I am just correcting him that Kam Krodh, Mad Lok, or these are the ten Vikaras, and there are the different different religious purpose of these Vikaras, and these are controlled, there are the different definitions, and these are controlled by your man. Our inner self, by your man, man is the chariot and we, when we go through the Bhagavad Gita, then again there are the same things that how we control our man, how these Vikaras should be controlled. Yeah. So please don't link that this is the Vijay and this is the Dashmi and we have to win, the, we have to celebrate the Vijay Dashmi with cannabis only. So please do that. And another thing is that okay, there is a psychological uh, environment to be preserved, bioproduct transformation and most economical plant. So I just want to tell you that no doubt, every plant, every plant, whatever we have in our country, whatever, if you go out in your lawn and you see the grass and if you see its biological value, if you see, go through it, you know, definitely it also has some uh, benefit value. And Sathya Yoga Din hai, aap apni mami se pooche ki parak ka saag jo hai, she will give you so much benefits about this parak ka saag jo hai, ki isme magnesium, isme calcium, isme protein, isme iron, isme itne saari chiz hai, jiska koi saag hai. 
तो सिंपली ये कि कि इसके ये जो कैनबीज है इसके अंदर बहुत सारे प्रोटीन है ऐसी कोई साइकोलॉजी कोई मेडिकल रिपोर्ट नहीं है अगर है तो मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा मिस्टर विकी से कि उसको हम रिकॉर्ड रखें और उसको बताएं कि ये मेडिकल रिपोर्ट क्या है इसके अंदर और ये इसके अंदर ये जो चीजें ओमेगा एसिड्स और ये सारी चीजें जो है इट शुड बी प्लेस्ड ऑन द रिकॉर्ड यू ऑल आर क्वाइट लर्नड गाइज जो है इट शुड बी वी शुड गो ऑन द फैक्ट्स नॉट बाय द वर्ड्स तो यू शुड ऑल्सो गो ऑन द फैक्ट्स एज ये फाइल रिट पटिशन बिफोर द ऑनरेबल दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट दिल्ली एंड द सेम इज ऑल्सो पेंडिंग बिफोर द ऑनरेबल दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट एंड स्टेट एज ऑल्सो फाइल ए रिप्लाई इन द मैटर एंड स्टेट एज ऑल्सो सेट के दीज थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो बीइंग नोटेड टू and it's a policy matter and whatever they are saying ke uh, as far as cannabis is concerned jo hai cannabis have been given specific provision in the statute itself specific specific provision in the ndps act like section 14 has been given to provide the license to provide the license for the agriculture of this cannabis plants to control to seal to purchase of these cannabis these cannabis plant only for the medical purposes and only for the commercial purposes jo hai not for the human consumption you see that whenever any statute is written down jo hai it is done after the lot of research lot of consultation with the psychologist lot of lot of consultation with the medical experts and all these things and after that only after taking the pros and cons of everything these things are included in this statute jo hai so if it is a natural product it doesn't mean that it's a good for the health jo hai i was just recently reading that it's a gateway if you use if you start using this jo hai no doubt for a momentary period for 2 hours 4 years 10 hours you get some kind of Uh, state of relaxation you you are in the air you are feeling that you are relaxed you are flying what about after 12 months 12 hours you have you are again on the land if any of you have experience i i do not recommend you to <laughs> so for few hours for some of the time you can feel a certain different kind of feeling you have but after that what will happen after that then there will urge again come and you will go for the higher quantity again you will go for the higher quantity then you will not be satisfied with the cannabis then you will say that now i should try some hard drug then i should go to the cocaine then i should go to the heroin and this is the gateway this is the psychological fact that this is the gateway when you start using something you become accustomed you can become used to after a certain period of time that thing loses its worth and you need more we are the human being you know we need after every step we need more If you are getting 90% marks, your parents will say 92, 94, 95. Then if you get 95, Uncle Ji ke bete ke 98. So don't be go, don't go so by kicking. All, 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 all agree, but the thing is, the same goes and applies for alcohol consumption as well. How I am not recommending alcohol also. I am not. Recommending Then the doc, don't you think the government should take a strict ban against alcohol, despite knowing all of the harmful benefits to the body and the mind, and control it just like how, in fact. If you look at the key definition of what narcotic is, all right, what psychotropic substance is, you understand the definition of what narcotic is and what psychotropic substance is. How is it that the government has not clubbed alcohol within this thing when it is doing the exact same effect? Alcohol also can be a narcotic. Alcohol also can be a psychotropic substance. Anything that affects the body is being clubbed as narcotic. Anything that affects your, anything that changes the state of your mind. Can be clubbed into psychotropic substances. Alcohol does both of these things. You know? Don't you agree? Everyone have experienced alcohol too much. How many of you guys have stopped at uh, no? Not much. Okay, good. But um, it it really makes you lose control. It really everything that you were just mentioning, which is you not know, like you need to you want more, you want more. For me, there is no problem with the prohibition of this cannabis plant. We will fight that in the court. But as a policy, how is it that the government missed out on alcohol? I think that alcohol is also not a good thing, you know, personally. In my 50 years of experience, I have never tested this thing, you know. And I always recommend that this should not be done. You know. The other thing is that that two vices can be put on the same platform. If the government is selling the alcohol or government is legalizing the alcohol, you know, it doesn't mean that government should uh, also legalize this cannabis. And after that, you will say that government should also legalize heroin. Then government should also legalize cocaine and go step sir. by step to that. It depends on the government. Different government has different policies. Government has uh, different uh, set of uh, things. They have to see the different things, you know. So we can't say that if the if you are legalizing liquor, then she, you should also legalize cannabis. Right? So it's a part of the government. It's a policy matter. So it should be done on that level only. Right? No, but sir, the only thing is that the, the uh, we are not asking the government to legalize cannabis because it's not you know, like it's they've taken it away. Of that which was already free for thousand of years, 
Yeah? They've taken it away, they've classified it as a dangerous drug. When it is not dangerous, it is, this law is based purely on lies and propaganda of some other country. It's not, not the entire act. Not the entire act. Believe me, NDPS act is very, very essential. All the harmful drugs needs to be kept away. Cannabis is not dangerous. Cannabis is not a deadly thing. It's not a lethal thing. Yes, you know, like it's not recommended that anyone to go and use cannabis. It's, when it finds you, it finds you. Um, but it's just that, you know, like you, this plant doesn't deserve the kind of image that everyone thinks that they, they have. No, no, you are taking in the wrong way. No? First thing is that the government has not banned the cannabis plants. As I have told my uh, in the initial remark itself that the cannabis plant is very much there. Its use is being taken in the medical purposes as well as for the commercial purposes. As far as for the consumption of the human being is concerned, no doubt government has to check on this and special treatment has given to the cannabis plants. No other thing has been allowed to go for the uh, as a crop. But this cannabis, cannabis plant has been permitted uh, for the farmers to be produced and specific licenses are being issued by the government, specific by the UP government, by the Uttarakhand government and they used to do it, where most of the, these things, uh, these, these, these kind of things uh, produced. I was recently going through this uh, particular study, because I got a very short time, uh, there is a study by Dr. Dragon M. Swerkik, MD, PhD, and it's Washington University School of Medical Science. So I am just reading the conclusive paras to him. Empirical and clinical studies reviewed here clearly demonstrate pathological effects of cannabis smoking on physical and especially mental health, as well as its interference with social and occupational functioning. We did not find in a single methodological sound study to suggest that the benefits of the smoking cannabis outweigh the associated risk. These negative data for outweigh documented benefits for a limited set of medical indications for which safe and effective alternative treatment are readily available. So, if cannabis, there are the, if you see that it's a medical benefits or something like this, you know, so there are the specific, there are the different other alternatives which are available, which are to be consumed under the medical prescription, under the guidance of the doctors, note itself that you buy something from the vendor smuggling outside your campus and you are buying it and you are using it, you don't know what has been uh, mixed in it and tomorrow you are uh, admitted in the hospital. So I am totally against it and uh, I request that these kinds of things, whatever the statute has been provided, whatever the law has done, it should be implied in total. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you according to the NDPS Act. So there is a flower. The flower is called as ganja. All right. There are compounds that are formed on top of this flower, which is what is giving you the psychotropic effect and the medicinal effect. All right. That, those are resin. It's like an oil. All right. So when you take the flower and rub it on your hand, you extract all of these resins that get stick to your hand and they collect it and then they make a small ball of it. That is what is called as charas or hashish. So as per the act, the entire plant is prohibited. The flower is prohibited, which is the ganja. The resins on top of this thing, which is the hashish or charas, is also prohibited. But industrial licenses can be allowed. You can also give out the licenses for fibers and for seeds. But the plant cannot grow without the flower. You see where the problem is. The plant cannot grow without the flower. So what the lies, what the policy is now saying is, let's just remove this narcotic element that is there, which is called the compound is called tetrahydrocannabinol (THC) in short. There are about 500 compounds within the flower. Okay, how many? 500. About 110 of them are cannabinoids, which means these alkaloids are found only in the cannabis flower, no other medicinal plant. So that's a very specific name to it called as cannabinoids. Out of these 110 cannabinoids, about every cannabinoid has a therapeutic value. Everything can change and affect your body into you know, like stimulating something or suppressing some biological activity which brings your body into a stable state. If you have too much BP, it will control your BP. 
If you have sugar issues, it will control your sugar. If you have immunity issues, it controls your immunity issues. If you have cancer, it destroys the cancer and throws the cancer cells out of the body. All scientifically proven. Alright? Your body can naturally do if all of these activities. If you have any medical certificates, if you have any medical reports suggesting that. Yes, we will definitely forward it. Please put on your website. Definitely. Put on that, uh, that so much uh, benefits. No, no, definitely. It, it, it will be long it should, be should be supported by the medical reports. Definitely. Yeah. Medical surveys, medical reports. We will get to that. So, uh, all of these uh, medicinal activities uh, that can occur. Uh, lost my point actually. It's the same thing. <laughs> So we were talking about uh, the yeah, cannabinoids yeah. and uh, uh, so about ten, about 110 cannabinoids, about 10 of them are scientifically researched, alright, THC, CBD, CBG, CBV, CBN, CBC, all of these compounds are studied. The NTPS Act prohibits only one compound, only one compound, which is the THC. That is the thing that causes the nasha and that is the thing that is highly produced within the flowers. So there is a war against this THC, but what does the THC do? The THC goes, when it is taken inside the system, it resets your entire system to become into a stable state by re relaxing you. After, after you getting relaxed, your body tends back to get into a natural homeostasis condition. So those are all scientifically proven things. But here's the issue with the license. They are saying you can grow it for industrial purposes, but if the plant has higher percentage of THC, your crop will be destroyed. There will be no compensation. Would any of you guys agree to this? Would any farmer take a risk of growing something and uh, 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 if the THC is found within the thing, uh, your crops will be destroyed and you will lose out the license, you will never be able to apply again and also you will be uh, uh, going through a entire criminal penalization as well because there is THC now in the plant. So this kind of policy framework is very ridiculous. It should not be encouraged in the society mainly because so now what the seed companies are doing is that let me create a cannabis variety genetically modified but not really genetically modified. There is a natural uh, selection and uh, uh, plant breeding uh, so where the THC will be very reduced so you can still extract the fibers in the seeds it will be limited to only about 0.3% THC. But the real issue of this entire uh, uh, act is this, after the plant is grown, all right, how the farmers deal with the agriculture is that when they have grown something, they collect the seeds and they re it back. Yeah. So the thing is, with this kind of policy coming out, the farmers will not be able to take the seed and grow it back on their farmland. Because the moment they do that, initially they were promised 0.3% limited THC. Now the next time when you take the seeds from this crop and you grow it again, it becomes 0.5. After you, you grow the plant, you take the seeds again, now it grow again, it becomes 1% THC. Now you are under the criminal purview that you are growing about 1000 kgs of ganja. So the farmers cannot really, uh, uh, they, they, despite, you know, like in fact, after 4 years of the policy being rolled out in Uttarakhand, even today the farmers are facing the problem of not having the seeds. Where do they grow? Where do they get the seed which produces only 0.3% THC? In very fair sense, if, if, if it has to be spoken logically, imagine the government tomorrow decides a war on diabetics. Alright? So all the fruits that it produces seed, uh, sweet should be prohibited because diabetes code, some scientists will create a link and the government believes it and then the sweet is not essential for the society so they'll remove it. So you're supposed to grow mangoes but the mango has only 1% sweet as compared to the 100% sweet that you enjoy. It cannot be done. So what the farmers are being forced to is, they have to procure the seeds only from few corporations. Okay, this is what is called as monopolization. Right, it creates a seed monopoly. Only few seed companies will be able to supply the seeds for the entire agricultural sector and all the seeds should be procured from this. This is a proven fact because I have travelled across Europe, spoken to hundreds of cannabis and hemp farmers who have the licenses. They are not supposed to regrow hemp again from the same seeds of what they have harvested. Everyone are supposed to get the seeds from one single company called EIHA, European Industrial Hemp Association. So they are supposed to procure the seeds only from. This is a monopoly, so it cannot work. And it should not be encouraged as well, because what if the company is in good hands, well and good, if the company is in bad hands, we are all messed. 
So that's number one. And uh, Sir was mentioning about the quote from particular uh, research and other things. It's very important, you know, like you can, with any kind of uh, medical science, there are you, for one particular topic, you can find 100 articles that speaks for it. There are 100 scientists who will speak against it. They're all their personal opinions. They can change the data in however way and manner as required to share things according to their point of view and their opinion, push their opinion. So it's important to go and read scientifically peer-reviewed data, which means one scientist has come up with something, that same opinion is tested by hundreds of other scientists. Only that peer-reviewed data is highly validated in the scientific community. Otherwise, not a, no XYZ can talk about it. Even me, do not believe anything that is being told by me. You need to go back and do your own education. At least self-education is the only education. And with all the available uh, resource that you guys have with the internet and mobile phones and other things, if you, even if you spend about an hour a day to research on good things of life, you will go somewhere. And my idea was not that uh, you should go and buy uh, uh, drugs from here or from drug dealer and this and that. No, we need to legalize this in such a way and manner. Go back before 1985, the plant was free, the plant was wild, there was no harm to the Indian society. So we should have this plant right next to our Tulsi plant in our bunker. Because it is medicinal. If we lose out on this medicinal plant, there are going to be any number of pharmaceutical corporations who are going to be pushing all sorts of synthetic drugs that does extremely damaging things to the body. And believe me, in this matter, can take some kind of a, a expert opinion because my last seven to eight years of life has been revolving around speaking to thousands and thousands of cancer patients across the country. They approach my organization, they share their details. They have been severely abused. All right? Cancer is a very, very dangerous uh, disease. And they have been promised with chemotherapy and radiation and surgery and all sorts of horrible things. They have lost their money, they have lost their future, they have lost the patients also. All being regulated medicines and synthetic supply. Remember, cannabis or not doesn't matter. Stick to natural medications. All right? And prevention is better than the cure, which means you are supposed to live a life in such a way and manner that you are not supposed to get the diseases in the first place. Prevention is better than cure. Every single thing that you consume needs to be consciously thought of. So, and there is no other better plant out there when it comes to preventative medicine as cancer, and as cannabis. If you consume even little amounts of cannabis, you are going to live a very disease-free life. Look at the sadhus and babas, who are the real sadhus and babas of this country. They live up to 70, 80, 100, 120 years without diseases. And that's been that way. Not promoting it, but keep it in mind, you know, like someday you will need this information. With that being said, we take three questions from the audience for first debate, Prakash sir, followed by three questions for Vicky sir. Now the way that this is going to be answered, sir, the moment you get asked a question, please note it down. After all three questions are asked, you can be you can feel free to take a few minutes to answer questions. So, by a show of hands, who wishes to ask Mr. Prakash questions? Speak for your recognize. Uh, so, uh, my question is that the law is so stringent and it is quite stringent to uh, that it can be compared with any other law like TADA or UPA. So, uh, why can't we distinguish between hard or soft drugs so that uh, we can uh, just if we, if we cannot legalize cannabis, we can just not, uh, in a way, totally ban it. And the second thing is that in judiciary, we assume accused as innocent until proven guilty. But this law uh, puts the burden on accused itself to prove its innocence. So how do you explain this uh, uh, paradox of this law? Thank you. We will take two more questions before we move on to answers. Anybody else willing to answer the question? Speaker, you recognize. Thing, sir. Uh, my question is, uh, firstly, uh, as you said that uh, when a law is enacted, uh, many minds come together to form uh, and think about all possible uh, consequences, right? Uh, but since it is 25 years, I believe every law requires a periodical review and uh, we should keep an open mind that circumstances change and law should also be uh, reviewed periodically. Uh, secondly, uh, as, uh, don't you think that Banning something is not a solution because even if you, uh, as a government, uh, say that let's ban this, uh, you aren't actually uh, 
stopping the population from consuming it. There are still black markets and people still somehow get to it, right? So instead of banning it, we should actually legalize it because that that brings it out in the open market and there you have, uh, it gets more visibility and you can better regulate it, uh, which is what you are targeting to initially. So what are your thoughts on this? Thank you. We'll take one last question from the audience. Does anybody else have a question? Right, speaker, uh, so you mentioned that there are chemicals mixed in the cannabis, right? So don't you think that if you make it legal, then there would be less of the chemicals mixed in it because it would be available to us, to the general public, I mean. So is there an option to legal it and then not have the chemical-filled cannabis instead of ha ha having it to surge here and there in the drug dealers? Thank you so much, audience, for this good question. So you have three minutes on it. Very good questions, and it should be asked. I appreciate it. First question you asked that it's so stringent as Tata, Yuvapa, and all these things. This is not the way. This is not the thing. Law is quite relaxed in case of cannabis. In case of other drugs, the punishment is up to 10 years, punishment up to life, punishment up to 10 years, and punishment is huge. Uh, financial punishment as well as confiscation of the goods. This is not in the case of cannabis. If up to 100 grams of cannabis is recovered and it's for the personal consumption, at the time of trial it is looked into that whether it's for the personal consumption or it's for the uh, sale or it's for the commercial or, or it's for the other purposes. There are number of judgment, number of observations where it has been observed. If it is for the personal consumption, and it's in the small quantity. I told you that up to 100 grams, it's the small quantity. And more than 100 grams, it's the commercial quantity. More than 100 grams, it's the, up to the 1,000 uh, grams, it's the commercial quantity. So if this amount, is, if this type of quantity is, if this kind of quantity is recovered, the punishment in this case is up to 6 months and uh, 10,000 rupees fine. And this is the only section which is variable. Rest of the sections of this NDPS Act are non variable but in case of when cannabis is recovered, it's in the small quantity, up to 100 grams, and it's for the person consumption. The punishment in this case is up to six months and 10,000 rupees fine, and it's payable. Rest of the sections of this particular act are non bearable and punishment is up to 10 years, punishment is up to life, or punishment is up to 20 years. First thing is that. Second, you said that till egg uh, use should not be treated as till it is not treated. I will tell you that Indian legal system is such a beautiful system. Our basic principle is that case 99 accused should be released, but one innocent should not be convicted. So there is very fair trial method in our country. Something is recovered, you must be, uh, I don't know, but I will advise you to all of them that you should also do law after your graduation degree. You must also know about the law of the next year. So. There is a quite fair trial. Witnesses are called, witnesses are uh, examined, and you have been given a chance of cross-examination. You can cross-examine the person, and there are the number of points where if it is established that it was, uh, uh, there, there, there are the certain regulars or there are the certain things, no doubt, uh, benefit is given to the accused. So don't say that uh, law is stringent or law is like this, you know. no person is guilty in the time he is convicted. So for law, the land is quite clear on this issue. Another question, a very good question was asked why the periodical review should not be done and we should legalize rather banning it to have. So, so my answer to this question is that okay, this statute was enacted in 1985 right? and it's a very short period of time today. We are living in a society. We can't compare the students sitting there in the SRGC college with a, uh, <coughs> with a uh, guy studying uh, up to with, with a guy education up to the class field or up to the uh, not going to the school and he is mis misusing this law. Yeah. Suppose law is changed. Suppose law is defined. Is our society developed enough? Is we are developed enough? Is we are intelligent enough to take the liberty of that law? So there are the policy matters because there are the people sitting at the top, they are looking at all these things. This is, that doesn't mean that they are not concerned about these things. You know? There are the number of panels by the government of India, there is the narcotic control bureau. And they use all kinds of discussion take place and they, they, they will also you know, 
and our other friends of in India. He is also looking into the matter. There are these kinds of things there. You uh, must aware that the number of cases, number of laws, which were quite primitive, which were quite old, that has been defeated. Number, we have around 5,000 of laws in the country, and out of which number of laws which have been deleted that they were not deleted, they were not in use, and these laws were deleted. So it depends on the society to society. I will give you an example. In India, only 2.83 percent, only 2.83 percent of the people try these kinds of things, and most of are in from the Sikkim, and Delhi is also having uh, second or third degree, second or third place in that list. So. We, if we actively compare it with the U.S. system, in U.S. system there is a in U.S. there is uh, you must be aware that it is a weapon policy and every major every major. Uh, who, uh, who can go to a weapon shop, who can go to an armory, and who can purchase the weapon up to his choice. Certain caliber, certain kind of weapon is free. Anyone can go to the weapon shop and can find out that this, I want this, this weapon, I want this weapon. You, you, you know the result? Yes, sir. You know the result? So you used to read in the newspapers that 16 kids were killed. 16, so many persons were killed to them. So, when our society will grow, with the passage of time, everything changes. If we are intelligent enough, if we are mature enough, no doubt because policy makers are sitting there, they are looking all the aspects of the society, there are different kinds of surveys are being done by the government, different kinds of surveys are being done by the Narcotic Control Bureau, and uh, my friend Vicky is also doing a lot of work on these kinds of issues. So these all kinds of reports are forwarded to the legal department. They review it, they take opinions from the different start of the society, and after that the law is fixed. If the need is find out that law is to be changed, definitely it will be changed to them. Another question was that ke, again it was here, it should be legal to them. It should be legal and why we purchase the chemical mix and why we uh, why we go to the it should be legal and when we will find we go to the chemist As I told you that there are a the number of no doubt that this plant has the medical value there. But this medical value substitutes are available in the market in different forms of medication, different forms of risk, different forms of medicines. So you can go to the doctor, you can consult the doctor, you can tell your problem that I have this kind of problem or I need this. Why we need this? We are intelligent enough, we are strong enough to deal with these things and so we should. You, you can take a substitute of these kinds of things. That's all this thing. Thank you so much, sir. We'll be back to PK. We'll be taking three questions for our data speaker that is Mr. Vodhura. Anybody wishing to ask some questions, please raise your hands. Um, so you talked about how alcohol leads to domestic abuse uh, and rape. Um, you also talked about how cannabis consumption can actually lead us to the path of being a way for action. Since such trends are actually more among the teenage uh, groups, don't you think people actually do it more for the satisfaction and the pleasure and the pure pressure that actually comes in and not for the self-realization and uh, to actually explore themselves. Don't you think more people would actually be converted into rashes than they choose through the process? Because, again, people are not doing that for self-exploration and something. That, that is actually under the peer pressure that is coming in. And people are actually doing it for the fun. And since alcohol leads to, like, the rapes and the domestic abuse, around holy time, I would, like, by my personal experience, like, my parents actually tell me not to go out on the holy day in the evening or something, because people are usually out under the consumption of chalas and ganja in the thing of, and actually I have actually seen, yeah, actually I have actually seen people being around like, and eat teasing happening on the days of, or the around the days of holy, because people are under the toxicity of, uh, the, yeah, oh, of course, the chores that they've consumed it. So, okay. Probably the bond because you don't know. You cannot assume these things and make an open statement. Yeah. So if, as a whole, if we think of it as um, bond being consumed and people are acting in that manner, do you really think that it will actually lead to more of a positive uh, effect than a negative one? 
Um, anybody else willing to ask questions, please raise your hands. Speaker in the back. Right, sir. So throughout this speech, your emphasis was on the fact that alcohol also has an air number of effects still it is legal and still there are no uh, rules against alcohol. But how does this in any case justify, uh, how does this provide a reason for cannabis also to be legal? Okay. Right. Now we'll be taking the last question for the co-speaker, I mean the Delta speaker. Please raise your hand high. The speaker is the British one. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Ansh. Uh, sir, firstly, I would like to mention I admire a lot the way you spoke. My question is you mentioned everybody has a right to define life their own way. You define your life your own way, I define my own way. Then, sir, does, not, does that not undermine the purpose of formation of laws? Won't we be back to the caveman era and not justify it? You know, the formation of a legal society first. Secondly, sir, one of the most you know, influential music drama and all the forms of art have been formulated under the influence of drugs like cocaine. That's that, that has been stated in the past. Does that justify drugs being legal in society? Because it has a lot of effects as well. Thank you so much for that question, Arjun With that, uh, so you have three minutes to answer these questions. The first question is uh, related to alcohol um, and uh, uh, cannabis. Well, the thing is, when, when it was mentioned about whether you becoming a dev or when you becoming a rakshas, it's about what kind of language you speak. And by language, it's not about whether Hindi or Kannada or Telugu or none of these things. It's the language of love or language of hate. So in spiritual terms, language of love or language of hate. If you choose to be on the language of love, if you choose to be on the action of love, you become a deva. If you choose the language of hate and actions of hate and hatredness, you choose the path of the Rakshasa. When you drink alcohol, the way it operates on the brain, scientific understanding is, it removes the access to specific parts of your brain which keeps you under control. Right? You lose that access. So now you'll be an uncontrollable person. You can you know that. You know, like people when they drink one shot, there'll be something that after the third or fourth shot, they lose control. They lose control of their body of their mind, of their values as well. Now when it comes to cannabis, it's not that. It connects your left side of the brain to the right side of the brain. There is part of your, half of your brain is logical and scientific, half of your brain is creative. For the first time after consuming cannabis, there is an entire equilibrium of neurological connections that are happening, which gives you logic and understanding, and also creativity at the same time. Alright. Now, yeah, so let me end with that because there's only three minutes. But cannabis doesn't lead you to uh, choose the path of practice. It's about what you do. Your principles, your upbringing, your actions, your reactions of life. Cannabis is a real sacred herb. It's a spiritual herb and it's a medicinal and therapeutical herb. Okay? It doesn't make you lose control like alcohol does. That's number one. And the whole thing about uh, not going outside after uh, the evening hours during the holy days and other things. It was some kind of an accusation that people are on bound. Most, you see, they've done a very good job of eradicating the bound culture as well. Which is, bound is also not so easily available even during holy or diwali or But alcohol is. In certain cases from 6 a.m. onwards. Alright, so people, it, it's become very easily regulated product, so people have access to alcohol, so they could be on anything, you cannot blame that on cannabis in any way. The second thing is, uh, the second question was alcohol, um, who is the person who asked that question? She's not that. Uh, what was the question, do you remember? Uh, the alcohol uh, is, uh, if alcohol uh, is legalized, uh, does it make sense to legalize cannabis? Uh, so, okay. So we're not asking for legalization of cannabis simply because alcohol is allowed. That's not the question. The question is, cannabis is therapeutical. It is sacred. It has cultural significance in this country. All right? It's very important to protect our traditions and cultures, including cannabis, which plays a very small role. And more much, the very deep question about cannabis is, it touches upon something called as faith. 
most of you guys have your own faith. Some of you are Hindu, some of you are uh, Muslim, some of you are Christians. Uh, everyone, the race of hand, everyone believes in Shiv. Shivji, okay. Everyone has a photo of Shivji, but no one has seen Shivji. Yeah? But you have all chosen to believe in Shivji. Now, tomorrow, if there is a law saying that all of these people who are worshipping this photo because they are not even seen, they are all some kind of they are hallucinating on some things and this faith is very dangerous and it needs to be prohibited. That's exactly how equivalent this particular prohibition against cannabis is as well. Because ultimately it goes down to your right to conscience. As this person, the gentleman here also was asking, right to conscience. Uh, Remind me of your question again, sorry. Yes. The question was, if you perceive life as you, and I perceive life as I do, then what is the meaning of law? Uh -huh. So, the entire denominator of that statement lies in the fact that you have the right to choose whatever you want to choose. Same goes to me, same goes to everyone. As long as we are not harming anyone else or any other being in that process. Correct? That's what is the denominator of that particular belief in right to conscience. So you have the right, we also have the right, but we don't harm others. And when it comes to cannabis consumption, we are not harming anyone. It's a right to exploration. If you are interested, you will study a particular book. If you are interested, you will study a particular course. If you are interested, you will travel to a particular place. If you are also interested in a spiritual journey, there is yoga, there is tapas, there is meditation, there is japa, all of these things. A person who has faith becomes religious. A person, person who has a religious experience becomes spiritual. Please understand that. So for you all, it's very important to walk the path of yoga, walk the path of dhyana and tapas and one-pointed focus and all of these things before even thinking about cannabis. It come where it comes. But that's not the purpose. You're not supposed to go looking for things as an experience. First, walk the path of yoga and dhyana and tapas and other things. And for me, my meditation started at the age of seven. My cannabis came into my life at the age of twenty-two. So there was that twelve plus years of uh, well, about 13, 13 years of meditation that was done before cannabis even came into. So that way, you know, they can, and not all people who smoke cannabis becomes bad people. Please, it's very important to understand this. It's a huge request that anything, any kind of policy change needs to be backed with evidence. And it's very, very important that people who do use cannabis, they're very relaxed. They do not choose aggression naturally as their first reaction. And uh, they become creative. If you think about all of the wonderful art forms and other things. You can, if you want to understand what cannabis does to a person, you can speak to a lot of artists. So they have gone through this change. They know that they can explain. So keep an open mind, but always choose whether cannabis or not doesn't matter. Do not spoil your health for anything. And today, sir, let me conclude this entire thing by saying one last thing, which is the biggest threat to Indic civilization or our country or our young kids right now is more of the drugs. It is the use of mobile phones and social media which is literally damaging the brain in phenomenal ways. There are so many studies that are being talked about right now where people are losing their ability to focus anymore. It's not the same how it used to be before. And these social media machines have created these applications in such a way and form that it is again scientifically proven that it is 10 to 20 times more addictive than cocaine. Alright, it is a very dangerous thing. Please throw away all the applications. If you want to search something, use internet in a wise way. Read books, go to libraries, enjoy a walk in a park, choose healthy things and healthy lifestyles. Meditate, yoga, and other things, and do participate in political discussions. It is very, very important. If you guys do not do that, you will not be having the future that you desire. All right? You need to learn the art of questioning things. You need to learn the art of fighting and creating a political debate around things, and respect the constitution and respect the law and stick to the field. Thank you, guys.
first year of his session somehow. But at the same time, audience members, now you all know becomes very important. Please take off your ballot uh, papers that are in front of your seats and make a vote. Once you've made a vote in exactly two minutes from now on, I will initiate the discourse based on number one. So you have two minutes. And I request the speakers, we have seen it in standing room. Audience members, please maintain that. Will you be announcing the voting decisions? So, audience members, please, thank you. Thank you so much. So, as you all know, this is the first session of Sabha and it has been envisioned as a discourse creation mechanism, similar to that of the Oxford Debate Forum. And we wish to have more of these discussions in college and possibly engaging more stakeholders in better quality discussions. So, with that being said, I, as the President of Delta SRCC, call this motion to an end and call it a vote uh, counting for this. For this vote counting, uh, just to gender feedback, it is vote counting was exceedingly clear. And the Secretary General of our uh, Cabinet, Mahak Sharma, will uh, reveal the vote for the co speaker. Right. Uh, so, for the co speaker, we have 31 votes. Yeah. And uh, I call upon the Chief Coordinator of Delta SRCC, that is Gaurav Nayar, to reveal the vote for the Delta speaker. The number of votes that the Delta got is 30. I call the post days and the data is not inactive. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you so much for being with us.